Hello, it is Jorbs. Today, 2023's Game of the Year released, Brotato, the best ARPG possibly ever made. Um, you only use the joystick. It is your only controller. You might be thinking, oh, like Vampire Survivors. No, not like Vampire Survivors, but also kind of like Vampire Survivors. It has the same controls as Vampire Survivors, but it's an ARPG. Trust me. Um, I wanted to show you how to win. Um, these are all beaten at max difficulty. I've played the game uh, several hundred hours. With SMGs, because I think SMGs are just a very vanilla approach to winning, which work on many characters, even characters which don't immediately seem like they would be best suited for shooting SMGs. It's just a pretty good gun. So, welcome to Brotato. We run around the map. I'm playing as well-rounded, which is a very normal potato with a few bonus stats. So, like, just very vanilla with a bit of extra help. And we pick up these little green things, and that's our money. There was also a crate there. The crate has an item in it. We got a propeller hat. Cool. Um, I'm going to take the propeller hat. We can talk more about luck later. We also got a level up. Every time we pick up one of the green things, we get one experience, which is enough for a level up. So we get to upgrade a part of our character model. Um, so we're already into talking about the decision making here, I guess. Now, I would say there are kind of three major categories of stat in Brotato. There is offensive power, there is defensive power, and there is like economy slash scaling sorts of things. Uh, range, I would say offensive power. Range can also be defensive, though. It's a bit of a miscellaneous stat, honestly. Crit chance, straight offensive power. Very simple. Melee damage, straight offensive power doesn't make SMGs do more damage, so not very relevant right now. Dodge, straight defensive power. Pretty simple. Um, just a percent chance to not take damage when you get hit. I'm going to reroll, though. Um, the reason for that is that at the start of a run of Brotato, as you get good at the game, dodging the enemies will be the simple way to survive. So you don't have to spend a ton of money or resources on defensive stats at the start of a run of Brotato. And looking at the offensive stats that we have here, crit chance is very inefficient offensive damage. Um, I don't think SMGs even double their damage on crits. I think they're 1.5x damage. And so crit chance is just increasing my damage by 2% if I take it. And we can do much, much, much better. So we'll roll again, and here's plus one range damage. Plus one range damage is great. If we look at our SMG, it deals three damage per shot and increases its damage by 50% of our flat range damage. So because of rounding, I didn't actually increase the damage that I was dealing by grabbing that range damage. But it is, like, if I got six range damage, I would have doubled my damage output at that point. That's sort of the rate at which we're scaling. And generally speaking, how Brotato works is that your first 10 to 20 flat damage for the weapon type that you're using are going to be the most efficient way to increase the damage that you're dealing. So we're definitely looking for flat range damage at the start. Generally speaking, like 10 to 20 of that is what we're aiming for. Um, looking at this shop, um, I'm just going to be building SMGs. I am pretty unlikely to ever buy a different weapon. The way that the shop mechanic works in Brotato is we're offered four things and we can reroll, and it costs more and more to reroll every time. The first three waves have shops which are guaranteed to have two weapons in them. At least two weapons? It might be at least two weapons. I'm not sure. Anyway, point being that as we go through the first three waves, our goal in the shops is going to be to grab weapons. We can get six weapons, and we want to get SMGs. Weapons are more likely to be of the type of weapons that you have. So we have a gun right now, which means we're more likely to see guns in the shop. Also, if you get more guns, you get a set bonus, as you can see there. So we'll get plus 50 range once we have six SMGs. 
They're also more likely to be the exact same type of weapon as what you already have. So we are most likely, out of all of the weapons we could roll, the most likely weapon we'll see is an SMG. Getting six SMGs here is pretty likely. And we can lock as we roll the shop. I'll just roll here as an example. I'll say I want the lens. I could have locked it. We still get a guaranteed two new weapons in the next store. I don't actually want to lock lens though. But what I'm doing as I'm looking through these stores is I'm looking to fill out with SMGs because buying this doubles my damage, right? I went from having one SMG to two SMGs. Very, very, very efficient way to increase my damage early on in the game. Um, and while I roll, I'm looking for really, really strong items. And which ones those are, you'll start to learn as you play more of the game. Coffee is a very, very, very strong item. Attack speed is excellent. Generally speaking, coffee is good value for money for offensive stats. Generally speaking, 10% um, attack speed is worth maybe 5% damage. Is that right? 10% attack speed is worth... I think 10% attack speed is actually valued at 16% damage in terms of the cost of stats in this game. So the minus 2% damage is, is not very significant compared to the 10% attack speed, and then 17 materials at this stage in the run is just a very small amount to be paying for it. And our reroll has started to cost quite a lot, so I think it's fine to buy coffee here instead of trying to keep rolling for SMGs. We'll be fine. We'll get more SMGs. So... Back to the game. We are in wave two now. Every wave, the enemies get a little bit stronger and more quantitative and deal more damage to you and have more health than everything. The waves also get longer, so the early waves are very short, but then I think each one is five seconds longer than the last. There's a tree. If we shoot the tree down, I don't think we quite got it. Uh, we didn't find a crate that time, so no items. That's too bad, just bad luck. Uh, we could go for luck, speaking of luck, and I would say that like as you get better at the game, you'll realize, oh, I don't actually have to go all offensive stats at the start. I could take some efficiently costed economic stats as well, but I'm just going to go straight for the offensive stats when they're offered to me. Flat range damage, like I said, very, very, very good. Um, this is an interesting level up choice. So we're getting two of these because we leveled up twice. We are now level three. Harvesting is a really interesting scaling stat. Uh, I have 10 harvesting right now. That's just because I started out with harvesting because of being the well-rounded potato. Which means that I earn 10 materials and experience at the end of each wave. And it will increase by 5% every time it activates until wave 20, which is the end of the run. It says decreases by 20 instead afterwards, but that's only if you're doing endless runs, which we're not going to be doing. We're just playing to wave 20. So I can grab more of this. And if you think about how many materials and experience that will give over the course of a run, it's a very large amount. It doesn't take too long for this to pay for itself. Um, uh, an upgrade is probably like three max HP right now, for example, would cost me maybe 25 materials or something like that. So if I grab five harvesting in five waves, that will have made me 25 materials plus 25 experience, which is a significant chunk toward another level. And I'll be able to buy my max HP then instead of now. Right now we're strong enough to get away with that. Let's do it. All right, cool. Uh, shop wave two. I got an SMG. Same sort of idea here where I'm going to be looking for SMGs. We're taking the cheap rolls. Sharp Bullet is new. So the first time I've played with Sharp Bullet is today. I'm not sure if it's worth locking. It's definitely very strong. It's a common item and it's unique, so you can only buy one of them. I don't think we have to lock it. I think it will come back. I will lock Fertilizer, though. Um, the melee damage doesn't matter to us, and 8 harvesting at that cost. This is one of the really strong items, in my opinion, that I'm happy to lock for in these early shops. All right, cool. Wave 3. Onward. So, 
part of getting good at Brotato, and this will win you like the really close runs, is getting really good at dodging, making sure you don't walk into these red dots that are on the screen, making sure that you don't get killed by the enemies, etc, etc, etc. But also, it's actually just a lot easier to dodge everything if you're building efficiently such that you like kill all the enemies. Because if there are a billion enemies on the map, it's a lot harder to dodge them than if there are two on the map and they are in the process of dying. Um, so hopefully by showing like which stats I'm valuing and how I'm playing shops, you'll get a sense of how you can get ahead so that you're not as reliant on dodging, which might lead to building bad habits if you're learning Bertato. Like if you're finding that you get behind because you're not buying the most effective stuff, then you might find that you die, and then you might think, oh, I need defensive stats so I don't die. And actually, if you'd just be building more efficiently the entire time, you'd be fine. As the game goes on, each wave, the chance of seeing blue, purple, and red upgrades and items increases. So we're seeing some blue upgrades here. Our luck is contributing to that. 10 luck is basically increasing the percent chance that we'll see that by 10%. So we're seeing 10% more blue items than we would be usually. The luck is a little bit complex. I don't think I need to get into it all right now. You can look it up on the wiki if you want all the exact formulas. But basically, we eventually cap out where there's just a max chance of seeing a blue in a shop, which we can't go above. And like around about wave 9, we'll probably cap out on that. Um, we may cap out on the chance of seeing purples. We will not cap out on the chance of seeing reds. So luck will always give you more reds over the course of a run. Um, generally speaking, I wouldn't recommend going above like 50 luck unless circumstances are making you particularly reliant on luck. Luck can deal damage in some situations, stuff like that. Anyway, uh, none of those stats, even though there were some blue stats there, none of them were just like good high efficiency damage. So I decided to reroll. I'm going to take more flat range damage. This is awesome. I'm very happy with it. Cool. Uh, we no longer get f two weapons guaranteed per shop. So I'm not as worried about rolling just looking for weapons at this point. Also, now we have four weapons. So increasing another, adding another weapon is only a 25% overall damage increase instead of like a 100% damage increase. So it's not that big a deal anymore. So I'll take the harvesting. Obviously, I do want to go up to six weapons, and I will go up to six weapons, but yeah. Uh, leather Vest, I would say this is a very, very, very material-efficient defensive item. If you're looking for defensive stats, this is one that I'm quite happy to buy quite often. It's just, it's currently way too early in the run to be investing it, in it. And armor is better the more max HP you have. So we'll get plus one max HP just by leveling up every time we level it gives us plus one max hp so we'll get some max hp that way and then we'll buy some efficient max hp at some point during the run and have more but for right now there's not that much reason to like be locking a leather vest i'm going to grab harvesting again here i don't think it's too late for it and i will take a cheap reroll even though i probably can't buy anything in the shop that i see just because there's only six materials to see another shop and I'm happy to spend six materials for the chance to lock a, an SMG for the next wave or a really strong common item or something like that. Might even roll again, honestly. Seven, it's a pretty cheap roll. Uh, tree is another one where the trees give three materials and a 20% base chance of dropping an item box every time you kill them. So buying tree will rapidly pay for itself. This is worth locking. All right onward now there's an inflection point where we stop caring about grabbing harvesting anymore because it doesn't have long enough left in the run to pay for itself basically and there is an inflection point where we start caring a lot more about defensive stats probably the biggest indicator that you're at an inflection point where you want to start caring more about defensive stats is if you get into the mid-game waves, like wave 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and you notice that you're just killing all of the enemies, at that point, offensive stats aren't necessary anymore. If you're comfortably killing all of the enemies around like wave 8 through 12, 
Sure, you still want to get some offensive stats, but you don't need to prioritize only them, and you can start spending some money on defensive stats. But right now, the enemies are scaling up fast enough that it makes sense for us to be investing pretty heavily in damage. So took a broken mouth there. Two items from crates this time around. Um, I'm not sure if one of those was from a tree or if they were both from enemies. Enemies have a small chance of dropping crates, much, much, much lower than a tree, but you will occasionally get them. Uh, so we got a broken mouth for plus five max HP. It gives minus one HP regen. HP regen and lifesteal are your most obvious ways of sustain in the game. They're not actually the only ways of sustain, and I would say that a lot of the time they're also not the most powerful types of sustain. For SMGs, lifesteal makes a lot of sense because we have a high rate of fire and our attacks have a lifesteal percent chance to heal us for 1 HP. So sometimes you will want some lifesteal for SMGs. Overall, I think that as you get better and better at the game, you don't really need sustain anymore. As you get better and better at the game, it becomes more like builds so that you can get hit several times in a wave and don't bother spending money on sustain because you'll randomly drop sustain from enemies anyway. They drop little fruits you can eat that heal you for three. And for the most part, you just can spend the money on damage or economy instead, and that will stop you from getting hit at all. Anyway, we take injection as well. We're very happy to get 7% damage here. More flat ranged damage. Sounds excellent to me. Let's roll this one. I think at this point in the run, like none of these are very high value, and also we could be getting blues at this point in the run. Picking between luck and attack speed is a little bit hard. Attack speed is very good. I probably want to go to like 100 to 150% attack speed this run. I think I'll just take luck for now, though. Get a little bit further ahead. All right, got the tree. We got a blue SMG. Our luck is coming through a little bit, maybe. I'm going to buy another propeller head, I think. This is the first time I feel like um, I might be making a mistake. It might be correct to roll here. Either way... I'm pretty comfortable that I'm going to win, so whatever. <laughs> maybe maybe both are fine. I guess what I'm really saying is that whether to buy 10 luck and minus 2% damage there, or to say, no, we're past the inflection point where we want to take stuff that's mostly helping us to see better options, and instead we would like to um, just focus on improving our damage by rolling for stuff that will do that. It's a little bit close. The delicious sound of SMGs shooting enemies. Bullets, bullets, bullets. Here I'll just take the attack speed. I'm happy enough to do that. We could take life steal. I talked about that a bit already, but I also talked about why I'm pretty happy to take attack speed instead. These are not super exciting. One of the things that I tried to do a lot when I was starting out with Rotato was to like buy stuff like turret here where it's just like 27 materials for enough damage over the course of the run to justify spending 27 materials basically if you're thinking about damage very um uniformly like a thousand damage is worth this many materials if you're thinking about it that way turret is great but what I found more and more is that damage like the damage that turret deals isn't as valuable as damage like the damage that SMGs deal. SMGs deal damage to enemies close to you, which are the enemies which are about to kill you. SMGs also let you choose which enemy you're damaging, which means that in elite waves, like we're going to have an elite on wave 11, you get to choose to kill that elite and focus it down. And turrets don't let you do that. On top of that, the damage that I deal with SMGs scales with other things, like the flat damage perks that I'm getting, for example. And turrets scale with engineering, which is not a thing that I'm interested in buying. So overall, I just stopped buying turrets, and when I stopped, I found that I didn't miss them, basically. I'm not 100% sure. Lure is a new item. This is the first day of me playing with it. I'm not 100% sure if it's worth buying here or not. 
It'll add two loot aliens, which I should be able to kill. There are two things to consider here, I think. One is it's actually kind of hard to kill loot aliens. Um, I don't think that we will struggle with it in this situation, but sometimes it's something to think about. Another thing is the way that loot boxes drop. Loot aliens are guaranteed to drop a loot box, but everything else, the chance of it dropping a loot box goes down every time you get a loot box from a wave. And so if you kill two loot aliens at the start of a wave, the chance of other things dropping loot boxes goes down significantly because you've already gotten two loot boxes. So, we're kind of spending 72 materials for three HP regen, which I don't care about at all, and kind of two loot boxes, but realistically more like one and a bit loot boxes probably when you do the math on the fact that we're causing our other things to be less likely to drop loot boxes. Um, we could take bag as well, and then we're guaranteed to get 30 materials off bag because we get two loot boxes immediately. That's what a crate is, a loot box. I kind of like that. Okay, let's do it. Let's lock in SMG. Baby elephant, same thing where I was talking about the turrets. I, I just don't really buy these anymore. We'll lock the small magazine as well. That'll be really good. Attack speed and range damage flat. Both really good stats. So we have a couple of really nice things to buy for damage next wave. And we can just go into this wave with 59 sword materials. In the top left, you may notice there's a 63, which is how much money I have. And there's an 11 in a bag, which is now 8. So at the end of a wave, if you haven't picked up all the materials on the ground, you don't get the extra materials until next wave. And what happens is at the start of the next wave, the first material drops that you get are twice as valuable until you've dropped all of the materials. Where's this other loot box? There it is. So I was intentionally trying to wait to kill the first one to try to let something else drop a loot box, but we didn't have any luck, unfortunately. I killed a tree and it didn't drop one. I killed a bunch of enemies, they didn't drop one either. Gentle Aliens, a pretty interesting item. 5% damage doesn't deal enough extra damage to kill 5% more enemies. Because of how multipliers work, like we're likely to get 100% extra damage from other sources over the course of the run, at which point this plus 5% damage is only actually going to be plus 2.5% damage. Uh, right now, it's basically a real 5% damage. Although right now it will depend on rounding with our flat range damage on SMGs. I'm not sure what the number would be. Uh, the big thing, though, is that an extra 5% enemies drops more materials, which gives you more economy. So that will pay for the fact that there are more enemies, typically. Typically speaking, if your potato is strong enough to take Gentle Alien, you're very happy to do so. The plus 2 max HP is sort of a little bit of gravy on top, not a huge deal either way. I'm not going to bother taking this. I'd rather have the luck than some HP regen that I don't really care about. Uh, purple lifesteal? I think I'll just take the purple lifesteal instead of rerolling. I already have good stuff to buy in the shop, right? So rerolling these level ups is a lot less exciting. I've talked a ton about flat range damage. Let's take some more. Okay, so the way that items work, well, the way that weapons specifically work is that we can combine weapons. So when I buy this, it will combine with other another SMG that I have. And that works all the way up to red. By the end of the run, we'll likely have three, six, six red submachine guns. I don't think Little Frog is terrible, as long as I'm not going for dodge percent, and I don't think I am. Pickup range is not an awful stat, and 10 harvesting for 86 isn't too bad either. And this is actually a discounted Little Frog, because if you buy the entire shop, your reroll becomes zero cost. So this only costs 77. Um... Yeah, I think it's okay. I will actually go ahead and lock fertilizer too. I don't think it's too late to spend 30 for 8 harvesting. 
It... Maybe you shouldn't do that <laughs> in your own runs. I don't know. I don't know. It'll be fine. I'm also playing a potato, which has a little bit of bonus strength, so that makes the decision a bit easier. On wave 7, there are these eggs which hatch enemies, and generally speaking, you should probably go shoot the eggs and kill them before the enemies hatch. But if you wait, you do get slightly more materials from the enemies than you would just from the eggs. So by waiting, I'm getting a little bit more economy. You can only do that if you're strong enough, and with this build, just like prioritizing the right stats, I am pretty easily strong enough, fortunately. I can recycle an engineering book, don't care about that. Um, I could think about just taking armor now. We're at a point where we are very, very strong, and I don't expect much difficulty for much of anything for the rest of the run. This is one of the stronger potatoes to begin with. Unfortunately, Banner gets rid of the lifesteal that we took, but I think I still buy it. The attack speed's good. The range isn't bad either. I'll take a relatively cheap reroll, just to see if I can find something worth locking. I think I did. I take a weird ghost for fun. Weird Ghost is very efficiently costed max HP, with the downside that you start the next wave with 1 HP. But, I mean, I'm not gonna get hit, we'll be fine. <laughs> I have a lot of deaths to Weird Ghost, but I think, like, if you want to get to a point where you are as winning as possible of a potato player, you have to just try to take Weird Ghost and work out how to dodge the enemies. And you're going to want to learn how to dodge the enemies anyway, right? So that was my experience. I definitely have gotten to a point where I recognize now there are some situations where I cannot take Weird Ghost or it is not worth it to take Weird Ghost. This felt like a, an incredibly low risk situation. The waves are always the same enemies. Minus the stuff like um, Gentle Alien is making it so there are a few more and stuff like that. The waves are always the same types of enemies, and so I know what's going to be on wave 8, and all of that stuff is pretty easy to dodge. Okay, um, Bandana is kind of like one of the keystone pieces of an SMG build. If we take this, all of a sudden we start piercing with our shots, and that takes care of I would say the one potential issue that you can have with SMGs, which is that you don't have any area of effect. Um, having pierce just means that you melt through crowds of enemies easily enough. I'm going to not be taking bandana. So in your own run, definitely take this because this is an incredibly, incredibly strong item. But I want to just demonstrate what it's like to win with SMGs without getting any strong stuff at all, <laughs> basically. So I'm not going to be taking the Keystone Purples. Uh, Baby with a Beard would be another one that you absolutely should take, and it will single-handedly win you a run, but I'm not going to be taking it. Community Support, is that what it's called? Another one that's incredibly, incredibly strong. I will not be taking it in this run. I just want to show you, basically, you can win with SMGs without Purples. Um, without Purples, all reds, you can just build in a way that is strong enough that it beats up everything, and that's what I want to show off. Another SMG2. We're up to 9 flat range damage. I want to go another 9 or so. Because each SMG increases its flat damage, this goes from 3, and this has flat damage 4, um, your red SMGs like flat damage a little bit less than your white SMGs. I think that's true for SMGs. It's generally true for weapons that the highest quality version of the weapon doesn't care as much about you having flat damage for it. And so if you're thinking like, oh, I'm going to get up to red SMGs so I don't need flat damage as much, that does kind of make sense. Although right now we don't have red SMGs, so we're very happy to have flat damage right now. Um, 
On the other hand, with SMGs, you can see the white one scales with 50% of range damage and the blue one scales with 60, and I th think that keeps going up on them. Each weapon is a little bit unique and different with how it scales. So that probably changes the math a little bit. Anyway, we're still aiming for like 15 to 20 or something flat range damage before we stop caring as much about it and start caring more about attack speed and percent damage, and then eventually even crit chance later on in the run, maybe. I'm going to take lure again. I do have the, the bag, right? Which gives me 15 materials from each crate, so that discounts Lura by 30, I guess. Not actually 30. I talked about this so much before, I don't want to talk about it again. Um, and we can buy coupon. It's early enough that minus 5% items price will pay for itself, and we're strong enough to do so. Worth noting that everything goes up in cost as the run goes on. So the leather vest used to cost less than it does now, and that's just how the economy works in this game. It ends up feeling pretty good, I would say. I don't think you'd want to have that not be the case, because you'd get to like toward the end of the run and just spend forever in a shop, and it would be kind of boring. <laughs> so. It's balanced so that your shops take around about the same amount of time throughout the entire run, which I appreciate. And runs, I would say, last maybe like 25 to 40 minutes if you're not talking nonstop like I am. You can probably get through one in 20 minutes, actually, if you're quick in the shop phase. So I will buy a coupon. I'm not sure about this leather vest. I think I'm going to go with no on it. Here's Baby with a Beard. This is the other one that I said. Like, absolutely, you should buy this. This will win you the run. You can see just with 30 luck, um, it's only wave 9, and I've already found both this and um, Bandana. So it's not that hard to find extremely strong purples with a little bit of luck. I think this is a bit above average, but certainly not unheard of. I'm going to take Ritual, which is just percent damage mostly. It also has a little bit of lifesteal on it, but mostly it's percent damage, which is, um, it's a little bit inefficient, honestly. Uh, pretty, pretty expensive, and percent damage isn't that great for us right now, but it's, I think, good enough. I would say it's like a middling damage increase purchase. Wave 9 is a lot of people's favorite wave in the game. Lots and lots and lots and lots of these small enemies who just take one shot to kill, pretty much. Can be tough for builds that don't have any area of effect or rate of fire. We have rate of fire, which is easily enough to deal with them all. But yeah, occasionally you will have a build that can't handle this. I should also maybe make a video showing off a melee build, because playing the game with a melee build does feel quite a lot different from playing it with a ranged build. I'd say that playing with a melee build, you actually really care a lot about sustain, because you're going to get hit more often as a cost of dealing damage. I would say that with a ranged build, um, speed is a defensive stat. You use it to dodge enemies and not get hit. Whereas with a melee build, speed can be defensive, but also it's kind of an offensive stat because you want to run into the enemies to hit them. Melee builds feel quite a lot different. I just got offered so much engineering. We'll just take 12% uh, more damage. And these are pretty bad. I think worth rerolling another 12% damage. Why not? Cool. Um, injections. Okay, I think spending a chunk of cash on a white item right now when we have 30 luck and we're at wave 9 shop already, so at this point in the run we start seeing quite a lot of purples and reds. I think it makes more sense to be rolling for stuff that's a bit stronger. It's ironic because I'm deliberately not buying the stuff that is the most strong, but you know, whatever. <laughs> I will take Silver Bullet here for extra damage against Elites. We're about to fight an Elite, and then there's another Elite on Wave 18, and two Elites on Wave 20 at Danger 20, so that's very good damage against them. Ugly Tooth's, like, okay. 
People ask me, is it worth it to buy the unique items that are okay just to get them out of the pool so you find other stuff? But realistically, there aren't many white items that we care about anyway, so if we roll a white item, it doesn't really matter to us if it's Ugly Tooth or not. Um, I would generally say that I don't care that much about removing an enemy's speed and care more about my own speed, so generally speaking, I'm not willing to spend a ton of money on that item. There are times when I will buy it though. Another small magazine, range damage flat, attack speed awesome, minus six percent flat, uh, minus six percent damage scaling, but that's like kind of okay. Could start thinking about buying crit chance now. Sure. Sure, why not? Um, Cyberball is really cheap because it gives a free reroll, and I'm rerolling anyway. I think I just don't really want it though. We got another banner to keep on messing with our lifesteal. That's fine. I will lock that. Onward. Wave 10. In my mind, wave 9 is like the end of early game. And now we get into mid game. We get our first horde or elite at earliest on wave 11. So this is the last wave that will never have an elite on it. Generally speaking, it's pretty easy. Ironically, wave 10 is actually sometimes really tough for area of attack builds, because if you look at how the enemies are spawning, they're spawning very spread out. So if you're like using a rocket launcher, hoping that it will kill five enemies with every shot, sometimes you can find that you get overwhelmed. Um, this is just... All of these problems with how damage works, SMGs don't have that problem. Because the rate of fire is so high. I don't think I quite managed to kill that. The rate of fire is so high that you don't have to worry about overkilling because you're just dealing 10 over and over again. You don't really have to worry about AoE because you will deal your damage to all of the enemies in the pack um, efficiently until they're all dead. You don't have to worry about enemies spawning spread out because you'll just shoot the spread out enemies. SMGs make the game. Um, very uniform. It feels very controlled. So going back to what I was saying about like, I'd kind of just like to be able to get hit three times and not die. I'm just going to take 9 max HP here. It's an efficient 9 max HP. You see that bag has made 120 materials so far. Buying another one for 38 feels a little bit expensive, especially when it's minus 1% speed. I think we're maybe a bit late for it. Dangerous Bunny for more free rerolls. We don't really need more range than this. We want some range on our SMGs, but it's just important to keep them shooting all the time. I think Sharp Bullet's good to buy here. Um, sure, let's buy Sharp Bullet. The way that piercing damage works, minus 20% piercing damage might imply to you that like you will pierce an enemy and then the second hit will deal 80% of the initial damage. That's not actually how it works though. Piercing damage by default has a 50% fall off. So actually it will deal 30% of what the initial shot dealt, which isn't that much. But in the situations where pierce matters, uh, it's going to be a really nice extra 25% damage to buy this item basically. And since I'm not buying the really broken stuff to deal with situations where pierce matters, let's take that one. Seems sensible-ish to me. I don't think it's too late for a coupon quite. We'll lock the ritual. Again, I think it's like just barely okay. Elite fight. Um, as you can see, the elite is dead. So, what happened there is we spent the entire run so far buying stats which are really good at dealing damage in whatever way we want and then we channeled that damage into the elite and it died almost straight away. So yeah, SMGs. There are enemies on this wave, well in the game in general and on this wave in particular, who shoot off this one right here. It shoots off little red balls every time it gets hit by a ranged weapon. They're sort of the only enemies in the game which are kind of actively 
countering, in quotation marks, SMGs. But the thing is, they shoot the balls so slowly, and you can just shoot them while you're far away from them. So they don't really end up actually mattering. I'll take night goggles. Sure, why not? Minus max HP and armor, but that's okay. Luck and dodge, but we lose lifesteal. Uh, I don't have any dodge. Generally speaking, for most of the stats in the game, if it goes below zero, it just acts like it's zero. Um, not true for like damage percentage, but so not true for all sets in the game, but for a lot of them. So if you can't think of a sensible way for it to act, like if you can't think of a sensible thing for minus 5% dodge to mean, probably it just means it doesn't do anything. And I think you can highlight them also and see, it just says you have a 0% chance to dodge attacks, even though it's at minus 5. So makes sense. Uh, I don't think I need life steal, so sure, we'll take the 20 luck. Recycle that, recycle this, I think. Take three more flat range damage. We're getting toward the point now where flat range damage is a lot less exciting. I'm not going to bother spending 47 for one here. And we're starting to look for some of the other multipliers, like damage percent, more attack speed, some crit chance is okay at this point. I'll take insanity too. Crit chance has some payoffs. Tentacle, for example, is payoff on crit chance. Whenever we kill an enemy with a critical hit, we have a 20% chance to heal one HP. It also gives us 3% crit, which is a little bit expensive for 3% crit, but it's okay. I'm not going to buy blood donation, but I think it would be fine too. I would just need to get more sustain than I have. We can buy a crown. It's a bit late for the crown to be really good, but it'll pay for itself. And then some, probably. Like I will buy a leather vest now. My damage is great, and I just need to make sure I don't get killed. I'm going to buy a sad tomato too. I happen to have 5 HP regen. This will give me good sustain. So like I said, if you get to mid game, you notice that you're dealing enough damage to kill everything easily. Now it kind of starts to make a little bit of sense to get some defensive stuff going to make sure that you don't die. My experience playing this game, when I started out, I cared about like all the defensive stats basically. I was like, okay, I need to have like max HP and armor so that my max HP goes further and then I need sustain to heal back up after I take damage. And I was really thinking a lot about that sort of stuff. And then I got to a point where I was like, okay, what I actually need is to just be able to survive like three hits and then sustain the health back. Because I'm never getting hit more than three times in quick succession, was what I started to notice as I got better at the game. And so you can save a lot on your max HP. You can just buy armor and sustain, and the armor makes it so you take less damage per hit. So you only need like 50 max HP or something. And then your sustain will get you that health back for the next time that you get cornered or position wrong or whatever in a wave. And then eventually I realized, oh, I'm just never getting hit three times in a wave anymore. And as you just get better and better at positioning and dodging attacks and building damage efficiently and dealing damage efficiently, you get to a point where basically you just don't have to spend as much money on defense anymore and, well... There's a feedback loop there, right? Where because you're not spending as much money on defense anymore, you get to spend more money on damage and it becomes easier not to take damage. And boom, all of a sudden you start winning a lot more. Medical Dart's really quite good. I think it's a bit late for it. But this this is a good item earlier on in the game for sure. It's very efficient um, regen. When I was talking about how turrets just don't deal damage that well, um, that's not true for the way that medical turret heals you. Um, it really does heal you very efficiently and very well. I'll take a wandering bot to slow enemies down. It's fine. It is not the most exciting thing in the world, but it's okay. Peacock going into wave 13 is certainly all right. Sure. I don't think Peacock's like incredible. Generally speaking, the stuff that gives you better experience gain isn't that good in this game because each level requires more and more experience, so it only ends up giving you one or two extra levels anyway. And if you think about what you could have bought instead, 
you can probably buy as much stuff as you're getting from the one or two extra levels in some other way. I got offered a red SMG, let's buy it. Looks like a red SMG has um, 80% damage scaling. So yeah, it goes 50, 60, 70, 80. Cool. This one deals, let's see, has the same range, the same attack speed. So it's just an extra one-third damage over the purple SMG, basically. Although you have to consider also that some of that's going to be overkill damage, so it's not necessarily actually doing an extra third. But generally speaking, upgrading weapons is around about worth it over the course of an Ambrotaito. Upgrading weapons isn't so good that it's miles and miles and miles better than buying the efficient damage stats, but it's good enough that you usually want to keep upgrading your weapons. There will definitely be runs where I don't bother upgrading my weapons all the way. In fact, there have been runs where I have never upgraded my weapons past tier 1 and still dealt enough damage to kill all the enemies. But for the most part, I don't think you need to be looking for that sort of thing to happen. For the most part, that's very unusual. I want to say, by the way, playing the game on an analog stick makes it much, 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 much easier to dodge things than playing on keyboard. So if you're not playing on an analog stick and you're struggling to dodge, I mean... Playing on keyboard is fun too, and there's nothing wrong with that at all, but if you want to get to a point where it's easier dodging, maybe investing and in getting an analog stick you can play on is worth the money or time, if all it is is like plugging it into the computer or whatever. I'm going to take the beanie here, because I just need a bit of speed, I think. I'm happy to have a bit more speed, I guess. I don't need it. And at this point I have 190 range, so losing the range isn't a big deal anymore at all. Handcuffs? Probably a little bit early for handcuffs. I think I'd be fine with 42 max HP, but I wouldn't mind going up to like 60. Four armor is tons of armor. Let's take four armor. And let's roll this, and I'm happy with attack speed that's good enough for me. This is fairly... It's like okay costed HP. It's kind of... It's kind of inefficiently costed. I could take Alloy. I said I want crit chance. I don't really care much about dodge. Sure, let's take Alloy. Another silver bullet. Keep getting better and better at killing the bosses. A bit too late to take fertilizer, probably. None of these appeal. I think I will. I'll combine these purples and buy a white SMG. Generally speaking, like, I could combine these right now into a red SMG, but generally speaking, I would rather have six weapons than less than six weapons. Um, combining two purples will lead to me dealing less damage overall right now. Um, if I'm ending up with five weapons instead. Generally speaking, I'm not super interested in buying a revolver here. One, because I'm very deliberately building in a way that makes my SMGs do a lot of damage, and revolver scales a little bit differently with stats, so I, I'm more interested in having lots of SMGs than having split SMGs and revolvers, but sometimes you'll split weapons. Another reason not to buy a revolver here is I want the stores to keep showing me SMGs most, and if I have a revolver, then whenever it rolls a weapon I already have, there's a 50% chance that it's a revolver instead of an SMG, which is going to make it harder to upgrade the SMGs that I have. Um, yeah. So for the most part, I won't, like, I wouldn't combine these and buy a revolver, generally speaking. There are some, some situations where you do want mixed weapons, especially if you're not using SMGs and you're using something else which isn't having such a great damage profile. It might make sense. I don't think it's too late to buy a tree, especially I have a bag, right? So if it drops a crate, it's an extra 15 materials for me. This cake is much, much, much more efficiently costed HP than the spicy thing that I was offered earlier. I don't even know what it's called. It's the same amount of HP. It loses 1% damage, but it costs 50 materials left. And 
50 materials, I should easily be able to buy 1% damage or the equivalent. I think there's a decent amount of like calibration in Brotato. Like, how much should I roll for the best items versus how much should I just to buy the items which are offered to me. I would say that what you're seeing me do right now is not abnormal for me and feels like it works pretty well. Also, is this a horde wave? I think this is a horde wave, right? So I have no AoE. I didn't buy the really broken stuff that makes it so your damage multiplies extremely, extremely large amounts, and I like very easily was keeping pace with a horde wave there. This is just buying the normal, moderately efficient items, basically. Potato has a lot of green on it. We're certainly going to take it. I think potato's like not actually that good for how much it costs for what it worth, for what it's worth, but it's certainly okay for how much it costs. It's just like the super broken purple items that I didn't take. Those ones are way, way, way better than potato. Uh, sure, why not? I don't know. Roll into armor. Armor is kind of my favorite defensive stat. I just think armor is very good. These are some good looking offensive stats. I think at this point I actually won't buy a ritual. I just, it's not that Material efficient. Let's buy a power generator. Gives percent damage for a percent speed. And this makes picking up more speed later more valuable. Killing a tree spawns a turret. That's kind of fun. I don't think it does anything here. Another silver bullet. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Arguably. Uh, having three silver bullets is kind of broken. It will certainly make the boss fights a lot easier. And with what's going on here, like, I kind of kill the non-boss enemies instantly, right? Like, it's not that hard to not die to them because they're not getting close to me. Um, so the fact that my boss fights are going to be, like, twice as fast because I have three silver bullets does kind of detract from the run as an instructional tool a little bit. I'm not going to have much of a chance to talk about the boss fights because the bosses are just going to die way too fast. But I would say, generally speaking, there are, I think, eight elites, and then on wave 20 there are two bosses who are always the same. And for the most part, if you run away from the elites, they have trouble killing you. And then as you get more used to fighting them, you learn how to position in ways which will let you deal damage to them as well. I'm going to take a weird ghost. Why not? I'll be starting next wave on 1 HP, but that is fine. Snail's kind of good. It does lose me 3% damage from power generator now, though. Another lure? Why not? Broken Mouth is very effective. Um, very gold efficient, cost efficient, max HP. But because we're actually using HP regen, it's a little bit worse. I will buy more luck to try to get some sweet stuff. Generally speaking, I prefer to have the worst level weapon as high as possible instead of the best level weapon as high as possible. So I'd generally speaking, like four purples and two reds more than I would like three reds and two blues and a purple. Are those the options I was choosing between? I think so. Um, but overall, they're very, very close. It's, it's not that different. So if you would rather make as many reds as possible as quickly as possible, I think that's okay. I'm mostly just thinking about my damage distribution being as smooth as possible so that I don't have weird situations where I'm expecting to kill an enemy to my left, but I don't because the gun on my left doesn't deal very much damage compared to the gun on my right, which is, you know, easily killing everything and I'm noticing that. Just feels like it makes the 
character a little bit easier to play if I'm dealing with about the same amount of damage in all directions. Anyway, that's my thinking on that for the most part, and it works for me. There are probably mathematically some situations where you would rather have a red as quickly as possible than upgrade all of your blues to purples as quickly as possible, but I don't know exactly when that would be. I haven't exactly done all the math on it. Just kind of vibing through the rest of the game here we are. Comfortably winning at this point, I would say. But yeah, this is the way that I win with SMGs. And I would say the build is like pretty simple. Here's community support, another one of the really broken purples that, as I said, I'm not going to be taking. It's like you get the flat range damage, then you start getting more damage percent, attack speed, some crit chance if you want. We never got the payoffs for crit chance, really. I guess we found a tentacle, but it's not like a huge deal. You can get a little bit of life steal for sustain. In this run, I was actually offered some really efficient HP regen, so I ended up with HP regen for sustain. So, like, it can happen. It doesn't matter a huge amount either way. And then you get some max HP and armor for survivability going through mid game. We also took some luck in harvesting in this, which have helped us get very, very strong, but you don't need to do that to win. Um, I just took them early because I was offered cost-efficient harvesting and luck early, and those are pretty good times to get them. And then I've taken a little bit of luck later on as well because I've been offered cost-efficient luck later on in a couple of places. But yeah, generally speaking, you're looking for cost efficiency, you're looking for the right stats at the right times, you're looking to get your six weapons going in the first three waves and upgrade them. And obviously don't walk face first into the enemies until you die. Although, honestly, if I try to walk face first into the enemies right now, like I am walking directly at the enemies. I am trying to get hit by the enemies. I got hit by one. Uh... Like, the build is strong enough that it's pretty hard. <laughs> so, once you get this stuff going, your ability or inability to dodge is not going to matter a huge deal anymore. Triangle of Power is fine. Um, it looks scary. Minus 2% damage when you take damage until the end of the wave. If you take this with the items which deal you 1 damage per second, it is genuinely pretty bad. But, uh... It's very, very, very efficient damage percentage in armor if you don't get hit. And I'm not planning to get hit, so let's not get hit. Take another 10 luck, why not? I don't really want this stuff. Taking that ghosts up there is like kind of fine to get just 20 max HP by the end of the run. This item has a lot of text. You can sometimes add a ghosts up there if you want for some survivability. It costs you damage. Definitely deals a lot less damage than your SMG as well. Armor is great. Nope. Probably not worth spending 50 for a roll. So, we are playing well-rounded, which you can really do just about anything with. It's another elite, by the way. This is a new one of an interesting one. It's dead. Uh, <laughs> the elites usually have two or three phases and they will switch to the next phase either a certain number of seconds through the wave or when they take a certain amount of damage. And so we got through phase one of that elite incredibly, incredibly, incredibly fast by shooting it. And then phase two was the moving circle of rings around us, which I've found as long as you have a bit of speed, as long as you're moving, like, they'll kind of just miss you every time, so... That elite seems pretty easy, but I've only been fighting it for a day. Who knows? Who knows what technology I will discover next? I forgot what I was saying before the elite fight stuff. <laughs> Too bad. Ooh! Giant Belt is fun. 
Critical hits deal 10% of enemies. Current health is bonus damage 1% for bosses and elites. I have 55% crit chance. This is some of the crit payoff. I'm going to take it. It is a broken red item, but I have no shame. Let's take bait. Sure, why not? Special enemies appear at the beginning of next wave. That'll be fun. Let's take a bit more armor. Take 8 max HP. I have so much damage that it's pretty fine to be spending mostly on defensive stats now. Oh, I got payoff for crit, so let's take some more crit. There's a good amount of just adapting to what you're offered in Brotato, which is really fun. I think I was saying there are... Ooh, how many? There are probably like 40 characters in this game, and a lot of them have very unique mechanics which make them deal damage off a new type of stat or make them unable to equip certain weapons or make them very strong with other types of weapons or there's one that isn't able to equip weapons at all there's one that's basically unable to deal damage at all so there are tons and tons and tons of different types of run you can play this is an example of how to efficiently buy damage with a pretty good weapon to win a very, I would say, normal, in quotation marks, type of run of Rotato. But there's a ton of depth in the game beyond just working out how to do this, and I'm still a very long way away from working out the strongest ways to play with everything that's going on. Attack speed should be better than flat damage at this point, I think. This is the final wave. Hunting trophies, another one of the payoffs for crit. We got it too late here, but if we'd gotten it earlier, this would be a lot of income. Sure. No, 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 no. Nope. Nope. Baby with a beard? I'll buy it just to show you what it does. It's not going to deal good damage against the bosses anyway, so... Um, also... Yeah, remember when I bought that giant spell? Anyway, okay, so... <laughs> that's, that's just a, a fairly normal, I would say, SMG run on Danger 5 in Brotato. And yeah, I hope that you enjoyed it. Um, I hope that I gave you a pretty straightforward and easy explanation of which stats are priorities at which times of the run and explained why. I think there's a lot of strategic depth in this game and it's a ton of fun to think about all the different things you can do. And again, like this is, those are the potatoes. And some of them are very, very, very different from others. I don't want to mouse over them because a lot of them are things that you have to unlock. So I don't want to like spoiler stuff for you if you're going to play the game for the first time. But yeah, a lot of these characters are very, very, very different from other characters. Some of them are super fun. Some of them are super difficult. Some of them are very easy. But for the most part, I would say the ones that are easy are easy in a pretty interesting way a lot of the time. Like it's like, well, you have to use this particular weapon, but you're really strong with it, and so you have an excuse to learn how this weapon scales and how to build around it, and it doesn't feel punishing because you're still pretty strong. There are a couple who are kind of pigeonholed into a strategy and not that good at that strategy, and those are, you know, the hardest potatoes in the game, but it's fun to have those as well. It's just a really good game. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the introduction to it, and... Feel free to check it out. I think it's discounted 20% on Steam today, but probably this video goes live after today, so too bad. <laughs> um, I stream this game all the time. I also have a bunch of VODs of me playing it on my other YouTube channel, Many Jorbs, M-A-N-Y-J-O-R-B-S, which is where I put all my variety content. And yeah, if you're interested in checking those out, please feel free. Bye-bye, everybody.